All right, y'all, this is going to be a video about a visualization tube you can use to memorize the order of draw for when you're collecting blood samples. I'm going to start by just mentioning this top row right here. I'm not going to draw it because you'll notice that this blood culture tube, the color varies a lot. It can be pink, black, yellow, purple, uh, and tons of patterns. And those are going to indicate what kind of environment is inside the tube. But you just need to know that it's going to uh, produce a clot and serum, and it's used for culture and sensitivity tests. Now, the reason why you want to take the blood culture test before all of these other tubes is because these aren't sterile. So if you put your needle into that tube that is not sterile, there's microorganisms all inside and all on the outside of it. And then when you switch out that tube, that needle is going to be contaminated, so when you put your blood culture tube onto it, uh, you're going to get those little microorganisms inside of your tube. And you don't want that because you just want to be looking at microorganisms that are from the inside of your patient. Okay, so the first one that we're going to actually draw is this light blue tube, and it's called a coagulation tube. Sometimes it's called a citrate tube. Sodium citrate is an anticoagulant, so our final sample in our tube is going to be whole blood or plasma if we spin it down. Um, light blue tubes are used to study uh, coagulation times, uh, so that's just how fast your blood is going to clot. So remember the fact that we are going to be talking about uh, coagulation studies in a second. All right, so let's go over here and let's start drawing. So I totally recommend that you do this with me. Uh, because then at the end you'll have a little thing you can like tape to your fridge and it'll look nice. Or you can do what I did and tape it to your bathroom mirror and stare at it when you're brushing your teeth uh, in the morning. Or at night too. I guess you should probably brush your teeth at night. Okay, all right. We are back at our table. Now let's talk about these red and gold tubes. The gold tubes are also called uh, goldenrod sometimes and sometimes these tubes are also a tiger top tube. It's just kind of like, it looks like a red and black marble or a red and gray marble, but I'm just going to call them red and gold tubes. A red tube is called a plain or clot tube because usually it will not have anything in it, but sometimes it will have that clot activator in it. Uh, the reason why we started to have to put clot activators in our tubes is because when we switched from glass to plastic tubes, the glass acted as a clot activator. The plastic does does not uh, uh, encourage clotting, so we add like a layer of chemicals to the inside of that tube to create that clot. And then the, the the reason why SST is called a serum separator tube is because it has a gel, and that gel helps separate the clot from the serum when you spin it down in the uh, in the centrifuge. So with both the gold and the red, we are going to have a final specimen that is a clot and a serum. And they're both kind of used for serological and uh, blood chemistries, um, but the SST is also used for immunology tests. All right. Oh, and then the reason why we don't want to get our clot activators into our light blue tubes is because since we're looking at how fast your blood is clotting, we don't want any chance of the clot activator getting into here that is going to alter your clotting time. And you know what? I forgot something. On this side, I'm going to write names, and on this side, I'm going to write additives. And I'll also upload a prettier version of this that isn't so scraggly. So we are going to write coagulation here. That's the name. And then we are going to write sodium citrate over here, that's additive. Okay, now we're going to do a sun. We're going to draw a sun, and then we're going to draw some rays. And because the uh, red tube can be taken uh, around the same time, we are going to just add some red into this sun. Now that we have our red and gold tubes drawn, let's talk about our green tubes. In general, green tubes are going to have heparin in it. Uh, heparin is a type of anticoagulant, and for different tests, we're going to use different kinds of heparin. 
The lithium heparin is a good one for metabolic panels, especially uh, electrolyte panels, because the sodium in sodium heparin can give falsely high values for uh, sodium in your panel. So if you're doing a metabolic panel, draw your light green before any darker green tubes. Both are called a PST, uh, plasma separator tube, and they often include a gel in there. You're, keep in mind that your final uh, products are going to be whole blood and plasma. I'm going to start by drawing some light green grass, and then I will draw some darker green grass as well, right underneath. And I'll come in and write the names right here. So first we have lithium heparin. And down here we have sodium heparin. And you know what? I just realized I put these guys in the wrong spot. That is the additives. Those are the additives, not the name. The name of these tubes are going to be PST. So once we have our green tubes drawn, we can move on to our lavender tube. Uh, let's see. The lavender tube is called EDTA, and that's an abbreviation for ethylene diamine tetra tetraacetic acid. I don't think you really need to memorize this full name. Just know that it's called EDTA. Uh, and keep in mind, you want to do the EDTA before uh, any electrolyte panels you're going to do, because EDTA contains potassium, and that will throw off your values. EDTA is an anticoagulant. It'll create a whole blood and plasma in your tube. And EDTA is used for hematology studies like a complete uh, blood count. So let's draw our EDTA tubes. I'm going to draw some flowers in this layer. And I will write the name, which is EDTA. And that is going to be the same as the additive. Oops. So now that we have our purple layer done, we're going to look at our chart again. Next is our, uh, you know what, one second. If this is wrong, don't pay attention to that. Uh, all right, <laughs> oops. Okay, so we have our light yellow tubes next. Uh, light yellow tubes are called ACD tubes. They contain acid citrate dextrose, which is an anticoagulant, so you'll have your whole blood and plasma sample at the end. ACD is used for uh, blood bank studies, like uh, genetic testing for paternity tests and stuff. So let's draw our ACD layer. I'm going to put little dandelions right here. And then I'll write the name of this tube over here. ACD. And the, uh, the additive is going to be the same thing, ACD. So we're looking pretty good so far. Our final tube is going to be the gray tube. Uh, and that is going to be called either just the gray tube or the glucose tube. It contains two additives. We have potassium oxalate and sodium fluoride. Potassium oxalate acts as an anticoagulant and the sodium fluoride acts as a glucose preservative, which is good because we uh, wants to look at the glucose and lactose uh, metabolism of those blood cells. And if uh, we just let the blood sit in that tube, it's going to basically starve itself. It's going to eat all that sugar. So let's go ahead and draw our gray tubes. Okay, we want gray. We can draw a little rock wall or pebble path or something like that and we can write our name. So that's gonna be glucose or gray. Our additives in the gray tubes are going to be potassium oxalate. And then the glucose preservative is sodium fluoride. And there we have our little uh, table drawing thing. And I just realized that we didn't label this guy over here. So well, let's write on one of these gold rays uh, SST. And then on the red, we can write clot slash plane. And the SST might have uh, a clot activator and a gel. And then the red is going to have 
a clot activator or nothing. Uh, right. I also like to put little dots or something by my anticoagulants. So we have our sodium citrate. Uh, both of these heparins are anticoagulants, as is EDTA and ACD. And then of the two things in glucose tubes, potassium oxalate is the anticoagulant. So I'll make a better, neater version of this, and I will upload it as well as a copy of this table uh, and put a link to it in the description of this video. All right. Thanks very much for watching.